Most of the slaves in Virginia came from West Africa, with the greatest number coming from what is now Nigeria. The stars mark the areas from which they came. Here are some slaves being loaded on ships. Slaves were introduced into Virginia in 1619. By 1860, they were one third of the population. Quite a number of counties in the Tidewater and Piedmont areas were majority slave. This is Southwest Virginia. Washington County is on the border with Tennessee. Western Virginia was very different from the eastern part of the state. In the east, there were large plantations with slave houses. In the west, slave holdings were usually small. The percentage of African Americans, with the exception of two counties, has declined since the Civil War. This is Washington County. A satellite view shows that much of the area is mountainous and cannot be farmed. This is the town of Abingdon, about 1845. There were slaves in the county from the beginning. By 1860, they were more than 16% of the population of Washington County. Most slaves worked on the land or were blacksmiths. A few others provided household and other services. There were very few free persons of color. Mostly the free persons of color found work wherever they could, and the women worked in the households. A few were skilled laborers. Early Virginia treated Africans as apprentices for the first 20 years, but then they redu were reduced to slaves. Because of race mixing, the colony in 1662 ruled that the race of the mother determined the status of a child. In 1669, an owner could kill a slave without suffering consequences. In 1691, whites who married Africans or Indians were banished from the colony. In 1705, slaves were considered real estate, but that caused a number of problems. Therefore, in 1727, slaves were considered personal property. But slaves could not marry, be educated, testify in court, except one of their own race, could not travel without a pass, and could not have their own churches. They had to sit in the back of the churches or in the balcony. If they did have a church, the minister had to be white. Most slave sales were private transactions, but they could be auctioned on the front steps of the courthouse, especially to settle the states. As late as 1863, people were still buying and selling slaves. There were frequent runaways. This is another runaway from Tobias Smith at Emory and Henry.
slave houses were usually just behind the main house. Most were one story rather than two. This is the house of James White, probably the richest man to ever live in Washington County. He owned many slaves, with most of them in Alabama. The inventory of his estate filled two large books. Some slaveholders rented their slaves. Rented slaves and Irishmen built the railroad. The Irishmen would not work with the blacks. Hired slaves also constructed the first building at Emory and Henry College. Slaves did the hard work at the salt works in Saltville. The wealth of the great families of Abingdon came from Saltville and therefore from the work of slaves. Slaves were also impressed to work on the fortification of Richmond and Saltville. The owners were paid for their services. Slave dealers came through buying slaves for the cotton and sugar fields of the Deep South. The death rate was quite high in those places. Abingdon was a key point on the Southern slave trade. Here is a slave coffle, our, ga our gang on the way to Tennessee, which would have passed through Abingdon. This is another one. Sometimes they were chained together. In 1815, someone set the courthouse on fire. When others could not save it, a slave by the name of Joe ran in and threw out combustibles. The white people then took up money to reward him. Rosanna Hill managed to become a free person. Her son Jarrett was owned by Samuel Montgomery. Jarrett ran away but was captured. Montgomery wanted to sell him because he might run away again, especially since he could pass for white. His mother did not want him to be sold to an owner who might abuse him. She then made a deal with Adam Hickman, who was also nervous about his running away. By that time, she owned three female slaves herself. She promised to keep them and pay taxes on them. But if Jerry ran away, she would turn her three female slaves over to Hickman. It is not known why she did not buy Jarrett, who did not run away again, because he showed up later in census reports. The American Colonization Society promoted sending free people back to Africa. About 15,000 did return. At least 42 of them came from Washington County. One was Mary Preston, who wrote back telling how the sea had been smooth for the entire journey and, she was, and how she was amazed by the fruits and other things there. But a year later, she died. The people of Abingdon raised money for one of the groups that returned to Africa. Liberia is a small country in West Africa. It adjoined the Sierra Leone, which was founded for slaves from the British Empire.
Monrovia, the capital, was named for President Monroe of Virginia. Notice how small the ships were for the long journey. During the upheaval of the Civil War, a number of slaves managed to leave with federal troops after they had burned Abingdon. After the war, the Southern states were put under military rule with the Freedmen's Bureau looking after the interests of the freed people. Reconstruction went well. The freed people were then allowed to marry, to vote, at least the men could vote, to have their own schools, go to court, and have their own church and Masonic Lodge. The men who led them, that yes, Harris, had been free when he came to Abingdon in 1858. He led the school, the church, and the Masonic Lodge, as well as running his barbershop and general store. 